Well, hello all, and I don't know how long this is going to be. Um, uh, down in the description box might be a whole lot of stuff, but we'll see once I upload this, and we'll see how much stuff I can actually cram in there. But, um, I really haven't been back since my last video, um, though I did. Someone asked me to upload some uh, board game videos, since I do have board games. And I did have an account that I hadn't really used much, so... Um, I did upload some of that, so if you're interested by any weird stretch of the imagination, um, I got two videos up. I'll put the uh, links in the description, along with a lot of star ratings of stuff, mainly G1, um, if I can fit them all, because it was 18 days of insanity. Um, we'll start with that, then we'll get on with uh, NXT and uh, SummerSlam, which I'm sure most of you here, so I won't talk about G1 very often, but or very long, or try not to. Um, so G1 was 18 days of just craziness, only because it was 18 days. Um, the the last video I did, I talked about the fact because it had just kind of started. Um, that I thought the format could work, but for the format to work, you had to just like load up the actual G1 matches, which I still firmly believe, and you had to have like decent guys um, doing those undercard multi-man tags or something, but it just became, I, I think by like day six, um, the multi-man matches just got really old, really fast, uh, just not that good of stuff. And you know, the thing that over the last couple of years, the reason why I think G1 got such, you know, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, wasn't just because you were having great matches. I've heard some people say, ah, oh, you had just as many good, great matches you know, when it was all said and done, as you had, you know, in previous years. And maybe that's so. But you didn't have great cards. I think that, that was the difference, as you had all these great cards, and so people were staying up late because you had all these great cards, and it was just like an event because of that. It wasn't just you were having great matches, you were having great cards. It's very easy when you have just a couple of great matches on a card to pick and choose. When you have, like, three or four like, you have, like, three great matches and a bunch of just really, really good matches, and you just want to watch the whole card, then that makes things a little different. And I think that is one of the things that was really missing from this year's G1. That said, um, you know, there was a lots of awesome stuff. Uh, the Michael Elgin stuff, you know, Michael Elgin just showed up and just killed it uh, without question. Um, hopefully there are no more naysayers of Michael Elgin, but I... I Bet there probably still are for some stupid reason. Um, you know, Tanahashi won, which uh, is surprising yet probably not too surprising. Uh, looks like they're going to do Okada and Tanahashi again at the Tokyo Dome, which I mean that's that is their money match, so that's not that big of a deal or big of a surprise, I guess. And uh, you know, that's pretty much it. <coughs> um, last three nights were all pretty much great. Uh, a lot of the um, shows were were great, but you had a lot. You had some that were just okay. You had a lot of just that were good and not great. Um, you did have a lot of great matches, so you can kind of pick and choose. I would say this year, because though those under those un, that undercard just multi man just, just crap is what it turned into. It was just like average. There were some that, that were really good, but only maybe a couple on the whole eighteen days. Most of them were just okay. And I just mean like, okay, you're kind of, oh, can I get through this type of thing? So, that's G1. Um, hopefully they learn the lesson. Hopefully we get something kind of different next year, because that would be good. Um, but, we'll see. So, uh, WrestleMania, or WrestleMania, listen, WrestleMania weekend. SummerSlam weekend. Um, this was turned into a big deal. Uh, of course, we had SummerSlam, and then... Uh, Ring of Honor was going to do their Ring of Honor, uh, Field of Honor 2, which is what they did, and uh, they had about 200 people showed up. Heard the card was really was was actually great, um, and I'll get into that a little bit. Haven't seen it, so there's that. And then of course, uh, because of Ring of Honor, then we got NXT show and going head to head, and they just stuck it in the Barclays Center as well, and it ended up doing. They said 15,000 on. Uh, the NXT show, but really is closer to 13, which is still amazingly crazy when you think about it, um, that they were able to get that for basically the, the you know, the developmental, you know, aspect of it. 
and um, so you had that. Again, um, you know, if I had gone, I probably still would have gone to the Ring of Honor show only because I, you know, looking at the NXT show, I thought the women's match would be great, but um, I thought the I, I wasn't really into the ladder match, and then nothing else on the card really did anything for me really. Um, where on the ROH show, there was a lot of stuff I just wanted to see. So, uh, you know, I probably me personally, um, that's what I would have done. Uh, you know, and I can always watch. Uh, NXT later, and uh, yeah, so there you go with that, but um, we did do NXT, it was awesome, I, I will freely admit that, um, the, the matches that even I wasn't too thrilled with, or really felt real confident going in, actually probably over-delivered, um, almost all of them I would say, and uh, yeah, um, you know, they started the show and uh, with uh, Triple H basically doing his best Paul Heyman and ECW uh uh, impersonation, um, which was kind of funny to see, I thought. And then uh, we just went from there. We had uh, we had uh, la, 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 what did we, have? we had Liger, yes, we had Liger taking on Tyler Breeze, um, which of course Liger showing up was kind of the big deal. And of course that <clears throat> a lot of people wondered, okay, well, how's the New Japan Ring of Honor thing gonna go from now on? Looks like maybe they're a little bit more on track. Um, maybe. The rumor is that, you know, New Japan wasn't all that happy with Ring of Honor because of uh, Watatami, what, Watatami, Watatabi, um, and the way they used him and then turn around on the uh, Field of Honor show and they used him a lot better, which I hope they do with the hope that they will get uh, Kamatsu and Tanaka um, because them and Ring of Honor would be just awesome. Just when they do kind of their excursion, that would be great. Um, but anyways, so we got this. This was fun. You know, Liger is the greatest at being Liger. And um, he did a really good job, so there was that. Uh, you know, Tyler Breeze did all of his stuff. Liger went over. I was kind of surprised about that. And then when you think about it, eh, maybe not so much. But there was that. Then you had the Vaudevillains taking up Lake and Murphy. I was not looking forward to this match. I was just like, really? Are we really? This? What, you know, you would think, you would think Enzo and Cass would be the ones that you know, would have gotten that shot, and they probably would have gone absolutely crazy, the fans, I would think. Um, well, uh, Insta Classic, who was there, uh, Brandon, when he was there, he said that, you know, when they were on the undercard, uh, not on the uh, the live show, that the fans would absolutely nuts for him, so there wasn't. But this match definitely over-delivered. Over I didn't think this was going to be any good at all. I'm not really into the Wad Villains. You know, it's a it's a kind of a, a not good even Chikara gimmick, um, you know, not even done very well, so, so, there was that. Then we had, uh, the debut of Apollo Crews taking on Ty Dillinger. This was a squash that Ty Dillinger probably got a little too much offense in, so it was that. But Apollo Crews did look very impressive. Um, Vince saw the, saw him, I'm sure Vince would probably be like, uh, can, when can we bring him up and can we do it now? So, there you go. Then we had Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin. This was another one I wasn't really excited for because I've never seen a Baron Corbin match that I even thought was just, like, any kind of good. This was at least all pretty good, I would say. Um, you know, it, it, was, it just kind of was what it was. Uh, it was still better than just about any Baron Corbin match I've ever seen, so there was that. So uh, Then we had... Just a fabulous match. Um, Bailey taking on Sasha Banks. Um, this was kind of built up. A lot of people thought this should have gone on last. In hindsight, maybe it should have. Maybe it shouldn't have. Who knows? Um, it's not like Finn Balor and Kevin Owens didn't go out there and deliver. Um, but this had a great backstory to it. Uh, they went out there and had just a crazy match where they did crazy spots. Um, complete. You know, you had you had 13,000 people there, and they were all going absolutely crazy for a women's match, which when you think of what then happened on the SummerSlam card, it speaks a lot about how they're being used, and the, not so much the place that, that they're given, but more of how they're presented, and um, I'll get to that when I get to you know, the Divas match on, uh, on the uh, SummerSlam card, but this was awesome absolutely amazingly awesome. Um, I watched this and it really reminded me because there was such great story. There was there was everything you wanted in a match. And I really hadn't seen... I mean, this reminded me so much of like, you know, 90s All Japan Women's. I mean, it really did. 
Um, I wouldn't say it was of that elite class of that stuff, but it was damn close. So yeah, it was. Yeah, this this was this was maybe the best match in WWE this year. Um, I have to go back and, and make sure, but I, I'm pretty confident in saying that. Then we had Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens in a ladder match. I wasn't really looking forward to this, only because we'd seen Finn Balor and Kevin Owens, and it was kind of like, eh, we really need to see this. And I figured Kevin Owens wasn't winning anyways. He didn't. Um, match was still great. They went out there after the women just tore it down, and they 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 delivered as well. So hats off to both of them. Um, show was awesome. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It was greatness. Um, then, of course, tonight, uh, or yesterday, by the time most of you see this, uh, it'll be, uh, WWE SummerSlam. And that show was not as good. Um, there was, there, it should have been, um, if booking hadn't gotten away, this would have been an amazing show, I think. But it, it just, I don't know what happened. So we had Sheamus versus Randy Orton starting, which I thought was a little weird. Uh, other people have stated this too. It was kind of just odd that that would start, um, to, particularly when you know that's not a match people are necessarily going to get hyped for. Then they booked it all sorts of weird, where just it, you know completely took the fans out of the match. The match was okay, but it was just you know it was Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Then we got the uh, tag team title match. Uh, the four-way, this was just all sorts of spotty craziness, just lots of fun. I really, 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 really like this. Uh, the New Day won their titles back. Um, just, like I said, I really like this. I, I thought it was just just a lot of fun, and just I, there was a lot of times I was just like, oh, oh, you know, I was marking up pretty hard. So that's always good. Then we had uh, Rusev versus Dolph Ziggler. <coughs> this was going good. And then they did a fuck finish, and it was like, really, really, where we did a double countout, and it was just like, dear God, really? And then we, the women got involved, and it was just like, okay, whatever. Um, then we got uh, Stephen Amell and Neville uh, taking on uh, King Barrett and Stardust. Amazingly. Uh, Stephen O'Mell actually was in this match a lot longer than you thought it would be, and actually got the heat spot. Um, he did pretty good. Um, match was okay. I mean, it was a, it was a celebrity match. Um, even on its own, I would say it would be okay. It, it wasn't as good as um, the Mayweather uh, a Big Show match, but that'd be hard to top for a celebrity match. Um, but still, it was it was okay, and it served its purpose, and was, it was fun. And there you go. Uh, then we had Rymac, uh, Miz, and Big Show. This was who cares. Honestly, eh. uh, Ryback won with us with a with a with a shadow pin. So eh, there we go. Then we had Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose taking on Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper in a match that proved that none of these guys should have ever been separated because they were so much better together. Um, this was really really good. My only really complaint was that Roman Reigns was out of this match for forever. Um, so you just had this massive, long, just Dean Ambrose getting beat down for what just seemed like forever, and it got old kind of fast, but, uh, Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper looked really good, uh, you know, so there you go, and, 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 you know, hopefully Roman Reigns basically is done with this and can go on to bigger and better things. Um, then we got Seth Rollins versus John Cena. And, of course, this started and people got kind of scared because they were looking at the time and going, are they actually going to go 60 minutes because it looked like there was that rumor and it seemed like that might make sense so they go 60 minutes and nobody would lose. That's not what they did. It's what they should have done in hindsight. That's not what they did. Um, so they go and they were having an awesome match. An absolutely stunningly awesome match. If this match had kept going the way it was going and they had been able to top it off, this would have been up there as far as, like, match of the year contenders in a year that is heavy with just amazing, crazy matches. And they were going that way, and then Jon Stewart came down and got involved and turned heel and attacked John Cena. So Seth Rollins won, and it was just kind of like, everyone was like, what just happened? Okay, so let's see. We've had a double count out, and we had, we had this mess. Okay, just keep that in mind. Then we had the Divas Tag Elimination match, and it was very evident in this match that, and people have talked about this, and it's even more evident now, you're never going to be able to get 
what apparently WWE wants. And one of my biggest issues with this is that Stephanie McMahon is like the center of all this, and she shouldn't be. It should be the women. You had Sasha Banks the night before go out and arguably put on the match of the year in WWE, and she was in the match maybe a minute and 30 seconds before her team got eliminated. She wasn't able to really show anything, really. It was just all sorts of just... Now, maybe she was hurt, and she was like, you know, I don't want to, you know, maybe. Who knows? But anyways, it just seemed very odd. And the fact of the matter is, if I was booking the match myself, I would have had the Bellas be the team that was the first out, and then had the new girls go out there and just do what they can do, and, you know, be awesome, and turn that crowd and just you know get this where apparently WWE wants to be but they're not going to be able to do it as long as they you know keep the the women they have for the most part that they have to push because of total divas cannot hang with these girls that have come from NXT they just can't I, I don't care how much better the Bellas have gotten they haven't gotten that much better that they can hang with these girls. And whenever they're in a match, it just, they drag it down. And the same thing with, you know, the other women who have been on the roster for a while. It just, that part of it does not work. If you want this to work, you have to go out there and you have to let these women shine and you have to let them do with their own thing. And you have to do it in singles matches. You can't be doing this six-man game warfare, whatever is going on. <coughs> and you can't have, you know, Stephanie McMahon trying to be the center of this. It just it doesn't work. And um, hopefully they wake up and realize this. I don't think they will because I don't think Kevin Dunn and, and Vince McMahon give two shits about this. And yeah, so anyways. The match was what it was. Uh, then we had Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. They went out there, had a really good match. Um, uh, I thought maybe we would get the UFO. I, I really did, but we didn't. Um, they teased it, maybe just a little bit, but no, we didn't get it. Uh, oh, it was just, just a great match, and given that, you know, what Kevin Owens was able to do the night before, and then come out and do this match, hats off to him. Um, then we had Undertaker versus Brock, which was of the main event. Everything was built around this, this match, and, the, and the pay-per-view was kind of, you know, centered around this match. And they went out, and it was very evident that if Undertaker hadn't gotten hurt in, uh, the match at WrestleMania, this was probably the match they were having, and they were having... It was it was it was it wasn't as good as Rollins and Cena, but it was getting pretty damn good, and it looked really good. And then they did a fuck finish. So we had three fuck finishes on this show, two of which were in the two biggest matches on this show. And are you fucking kidding me? And I, I don't even get it. I I, I don't. I, you know, it looks like what they're gonna do is Brock versus Undertaker again at WrestleMania, which is fine, but that's not what the fans want. What the fans want are is Undertaker versus Sting. But that's not what Vince wants, so that's not what they're going to get. It's just it's the same old crap. Just the same old crap. Um, over and over again. But anyways, um, the show was... I don't know. It, it, it was good, but it wasn't... It could have been great. Um, and it had a lot of great... It had great stuff on it, but it just felt flat. And it wasn't anything I'd ever want to watch again. So, eh, unlike the NXT show. It's like, two. I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I don't get how you can have these two entities, and you have one booking one way, and the other booking the other way, and and, and one working, and the other one's just like, eh, yeah, it's working, but we don't care. I just, I, I don't get it at all. But anyways, um, well, I'm out. That, that's pretty much it. Um... I don't know what else to say about it. Just there it is. Like I said, lots of um, hopefully if YouTube lets me, lots of of, of New Japan stuff, uh, the board game videos, and uh, a lot of other stuff will be in the description box. Anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one.